Mirage bands have typically been some kind of flexible plastic, mini blinds, uh, thin carbon fiber, and other things that have been attached with Velcro, elastic, or rubber bands. And none of them have really been great options. I'm going to show you the latest thing from F-Class products. It uses a magnet mounting system. It floats above your barrel, and it never comes in contact with it. So let's go take a look at it. This is what we are talking about. We're talking about barrel heat coming up, obstructing the view of your scope, or at least distorting it. And this is often solved. You can see I already have Velcro from my old system, which was just a thin piece of carbon fiber. But if the barrel gets too hot, the Velcro will slip and slide around. Every time I put a new barrel on, I have to remember to put the Velcro on. And on top of that, it is a thinner material. Heat still gets through it, and I still get some distortion, although it is pretty minor. So what do they have? Well, this is what F-Class Products has done. They have a very thick eighth inch piece of uh, carbon fiber, so it is very rigid. They give you all the attachment materials, which I'll cover in a second, as well as the glue. And on the packaging, they have a little QR code you can scan for actually really good instructions on how to do this if for some reason whatever I'm doing fails you. Here's what we're going to do though. We want to first make sure where we want to put this band. I tend to run shorter barrels. I'm running a 30 inch barrel. So I'm going to have a fair amount of this band underneath my scope, but that is not a bad thing because while it looks like there's a lot of it under the scope, the reality is I have a sunshade on. And if I didn't have this on, then I would only have about an inch and a half or so of maybe two inches of barrel of a uh, barrel coverage here. So that's good. I want to make sure that whether I have the sunshade on or off that I am keeping the heat from coming up. So again, that's why I don't mind it being back back as far as I am. Before you order the system, you need to make sure that you are able to measure and figure out what size coupler nuts you need, which are going to be the standoffs here. And there's a very simple method. You would just, uh, you're, you're just going to take something like a little piece of wood, stand it here. You're going to come across and give yourself a little gap and put a measurement or a little scribe on whatever it is, whether it's a pencil or a piece of wood or a little piece of metal, plastic, whatever. And then you're just going to measure that height when you call and order or when you order online, you can then order the uh, correct standoffs. Now I did get uh, both the five eighths and the half inch. Technically, I think they both work, although I'm going to start with the five eighths because I think that is a better fit for what I'm looking to do. But the nice thing is I'm not married to it. If I want to try going a little bit lower, that's great. I can do that. The system also transfers. We're going to be gluing down the magnets. So that part is, is, you know, fixed to that stock, but this and the stand, oops, this and the standoffs are going to be transferable from gun to gun to gun. So if you have a stock, maybe one's got metal rails, one got wood rails, you can have different size standoffs. You simply unscrew it, screw them on, and then they'll pop right in. So very simple. Here's what we need to do now. I need to figure out where I want to put this and I can tell you I'm going to have it just back of the tuner so that I can read what is going on. I don't need it to cover the entire end of the barrel. Really this area is what we're most concerned with in terms of barrel heat coming up in front and distorting our view. So I'm going to go like this and then I want to have them pretty far apart. I mean I don't want them right next to each other because even though there's a system I'll show you that keeps it from pivoting. I want to have the most rigidity in terms of overall length. So I'm going to put one roughly here and I'm going to put one roughly here. And honestly, I'm not going to be too precise about that. Uh, now that I know the height that I ordered, obviously, and I know that I've got it lined up with my scope and stuff, I am going to pull the action and, and everything and barrel out of the stock so that I can work on the stock without potentially causing any problems. It'll make for a much cleaner install. As far as the kit, I did men forget to mention that uh, it does have, I believe these are aluminum screws, so it does help a little bit of the weight. Your coupler nuts are of course regular metal and they are going to have a little bit of weight and your carbon fiber has a little bit more weight than you might be used to. So just make sure that if you're going to go with this system and you are a competitor that uh, wants to make sure they're following the rules, that you are uh, checking your gun weight and making sure that this provides enough, um, you know, that it's not too heavy to put you over your weight. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. We're going to deal with just the, uh, the stock at this point and uh, we'll get this thing installed. You can see I have my stock now by itself here and this just gives me full access. Now that I've made my marks and I know where I want this to go, uh, what I'm going to do, and you can see it, it fits perfectly. It's basically three inches wide. What I'm going to do is I want to take a measurement of the rails here and just see roughly where center is. So 76. Seventy-two, so thirty-six is where I'm going to be, and what I want to do now is go ahead and come off of this and be at thirty-six. Okay, so there's thirty-six, and what I'm going to do is put a mark here. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing at the top. And I would like to have these as straight as possible. And I don't have a square on me, uh, like a, a any kind of a that uh, like a woodworking square. So it doesn't have to be exact. So what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to fold a piece of paper. Okay. And then we're going to put this around I did not fold it all the way. There we go. There we go. And that's now going to give me what is square. And I don't care about drawing on this because alcohol will take it off. And same thing up here. So this will get us pretty close to being on center. And then, so we were at 36 here and we were at 36 here and we're going to come out 36 cross the line there and 36 cross the line okay so I now have four spots that I am going to be gluing and again that's so that it can sit you can see I've got my marks right about here and that's pretty much where it is going to sit um, Actually, it's going to go this way. And it does say in the instructions that there is a natural curve to, uh, to this. But I have to tell you, I haven't found it in this piece. So I don't, I don't know. Like I, he says to make sure that it goes up at the end. But um, I don't know. I don't see... Like everything lays really flat with this. So I don't know. Do my best with it. So we're going to go like this. Now I need my drill. And I'm going to drill into a piece of wood. So I always keep a piece of wood here in my shop just for doing odd things where I have to drill through something. So I just have this, that way I don't ruin my workbench. I'm going to take his drill bit. And we're gonna just Thank <laughs> you. 
So there's the first two, boom, boom. And we're gonna do the same thing here. And you wanna do this before you do the magnet attaching because any, any like inaccuracies in your drilling don't matter because you're gonna be setting up the, uh, the magnets afterwards. So the magnets are gonna line up wherever your holes are. I saw half a dozen people using these or down at Southwest Nationals. And that's really what piqued my interest. All right. All right, those are nice clean holes. We're gonna put this aside and I'll throw that in the trash later. But you can see here now, one, two, three, four. Got four good holes. Now we need to attach, and let me move this out of the way for just a second here. So there's one. And like I said, we're gonna use the 5 8 standoffs first. I can always swap them out, it's not a big deal, because once this is lined up, it doesn't matter what size standoffs are in here. The important thing is to make sure that so I'll, I'll put these two screws in first, but these diagonal are where you want the two with the little nub. So we're gonna do the, the two nubs first. And that's going to ensure that when they're locked into these little magnets that have the holes, it doesn't go anywhere. And if you can see here, you can see here there's uh, there's two magnets with holes in it and that's going to line up right there so that they don't move. It's actually a pretty good design. Let's see, there's the other magnet. And let's put the other standoffs on now. Now for traveling, something like that, obviously I wouldn't want, if I'm flying, I'm not going to leave these standoffs attached because you know, if something weird happens, they could get broken. So I will be unscrewing these and just putting, you know, the screws in my, my bag and then that'll go in my gun bag. And then here's the last two magnets. Now the last two aren't going to center up. So you have to make sure that you do the centering as best you can. And that's looking pretty good. So let me bring the stock back. And I'm just gonna take a look down the center to make sure that there's no obstructions that I'm missing of any kind. And everything looks, everything looks good there. So that's good. And so that's roughly where we are going to have it placed and it will still fit obviously uh, everything we need. So now what I want to do is I'm just gonna mark, I'm just gonna lift this up, and I'm sorry you can't see it, but I am gonna just lightly mark, mainly because we are supposed to wet the area just a little bit before we glue it down. So now I have four marks on top, and the plan, I mean, here's the thing. I don't have like a really thick, heavy clear coat on this stock, so if I glue these down and something doesn't work out right, I can pop them off. You could probably do the same thing on a clear without too much problems. A lot of people have aluminum rails. I mean, whatever it is, it works for you. So this is the glue, uh, as it says here, clean surface and magnets with rubbing alcohol, which I'll do in a second. Damp, lightly dampen one surface with water. So we'll dampen uh, this part and then we'll put a little bit of glue on the bottom here and then we will Clamp it down, I guess. That's the that's the story. So 
So let's get the alcohol out. So those are good. And then what I'm gonna do, because if I alcohol this, I won't be able to see where my dots are. So I'm gonna put, I'm using the corner here and I'll do it on this other side too. So that's just going to give me a rough line up here. It's just, it's pointing, pointing out for me where it should go. So now we are going to alcohol this. I'm a little nervous, I won't lie. It's a little weird gluing something to my stock. It's a very unnatural, very unnatural thing. Like I know it'll be fine, but it's just, uh, maybe it's better I'm doing it so you guys don't feel as weird doing it. So we're going to lightly dampen. Okay, there's that, there's that, and there's that. Lightly dampen that. And then we have the glue. Apply glue to bottom of magnets. Shit. I had enough to spare there. Now there's my points. And I will uh, just lightly clamp this down. back just a little bit so that I can get the clamp under this side. Okay. Now we'll just do any final adjustments here. It does say about two hours. Two hours for clamp, uh, uh, Two hours for uh, clamping and then 24 hours for full full meal deal here. Well, look, it's not perfect. I, I can see that. I need to figure out. It's just a little bit off on the clamping. Let me try um, moving my clamp a little bit. I'm going to get behind it. You can't see it on camera here, but I'm just getting behind it to make sure that it looks at least as straight as I can 
get it. And I'm sure there's plenty of you that are going to comment on what a better job you could have done. And I'm sure you could have, but this is how I work. Good, 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 and good. And just double checking the front, make sure nothing is in the way and make sure it looks straight from the front. We'll check the top one more time here. There's something about this clamp I'm having a little bit of problem with. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, for some reason, it wasn't clamping up right. Okay. It was kind of, it was drifting to one side a little bit. It looks good. Well, I think that's about as good as I can go without completely getting neurotic about it. My holes were not perfectly on center despite my best efforts, but I think it's going to work. So I guess we'll come back tomorrow and see what it looks like. We have now waited the appropriate amount of time. It said you could, you could declamp it. Honestly, it was just easier for me to just leave this on the bench. So let's see how it looks. Little, little bits of aiming tape here. Wow, those are stout. Okay. Uh, so, everything looks good. Now, I was a little heavy-handed on the, on the glue. That was on me. Uh, I probably should have cleaned it off and started it over. To be honest, it's hard sometimes making videos on stuff. Uh, you know, you only get one chance to do it and, uh, you know, I, I probably should have prepped just a little bit better with the glue, uh, you know, but it's going to be covered anyway. So in the grand sense, I don't really care, but it did spill out just a little bit on here. As far as the actual magnet system goes though, so it clicks right in. I really like that. So you know when you're in because you can feel it click. So I think the thing to do now is I'm going to go ahead. I'll just turn off the camera here for a minute. I need to put this, uh, put my action back in. And then we can see how it fits. And I can play with the standoffs and see if the half inch would indeed work. Or if I need to stay with the five eighths. And then how it looks overall lengthwise. I'm really keeping my fingers crossed. We will see here in a minute. <laughs> Now that we have the gun put back together, I have taken off the Velcro, cleaned all this up because I didn't want to have any po uh, potential, you know, uh, interruption with the band. I've got the magnets. I was just a little heavy handed on the glue. It's not the end of the world. It's not, it's not even remotely affecting anything. And to be honest, it's hard sometimes when you're filming videos like this to do everything perfectly. Uh, I probably should have when I put a little bit too much glue on that you saw, I probably should have Stop taking the time to clean them off and start it over with the glue. I did not. Uh, but the great thing is it doesn't really matter. Even if you're heavy handed and a little sloppy with it, uh, it doesn't affect anything. The, the magnets are glued down. They're doing their job. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this on and see what it feels like. So that really sucks down. Now you can see that it is moving side to side here. And you remember we talked about those two locked down. They're the, the, the magnets with the hole in the middle and there's a little nub coming out of the, um, the standoffs. So if you listen, it should click in. Yep. So there you go. So now you know it's not going anywhere. It can't go side to side. 
So who is this for? Well, I mean, I get it. this isn't going to be for everybody. This is definitely a competition style setup or for the guy who likes to really do serious load development and shooting and doesn't want to deal with, you know, taking different barrels on and off and having Velcro and mini blinds and different things like that on it. I like the idea of being able to simply get more magnets, put them on my other guns. You know, you go through the same glue down process, it takes one night, not a big deal. And then you can move this over. For travel, I talked about this, but super easy to just undo these standoffs and then pull out the screws. That way I don't risk any kind of damage. I can put this in my gun case underneath my padding, put the standoffs in a little bag, and then I'm good to go when I get to my match. I do like uh, the fact that it goes in and stays really stout. And the, uh, the 5 eighths was really the right choice. I tried uh, holding up these, these half inch standoffs and it's really tough. Oops. It's really tough to imagine that that would be the right thing. In fact, let me show you with the camera. I really like the height that this is at. If you look, you can see that the Mirage band is perfectly splitting the barrel and the optics all the way down. And there's two reasons that I think that's the right fit for me. The first is obviously going to be barrel harmonics. The whole point of getting the hover kit is so you don't have something slapping on the barrel while you're shooting. So if you're really trying to cut it close, you could potentially end up with that. The bigger thing for me is that you get heat transfer through. I mean, I don't care what it is, Kydex, uh, uh, carbon, you know, mini blinds, whatever. Some heat is going to make its way through. And the whole point of this is to disperse that, uh, that mirage, the heat waves away from your view through the optics. So by having a little bit of an air gap under there, it actually lets the heat come up and then get kind of pushed or blown out. If it was too tight, it wouldn't get blown out. You'd get some heat transfer through here because it's in such close proximity. And then you would end up in the, you know, not as bad, but potentially similar situation where you would not be able to get a perfect field of view through your scope. I really like the design. I know it's not going to be for everybody. I know there's plenty of people that are happy to, to throw Velcro and, and mini blinds on their gun and that's cool. But I will say, having gone through the setup, even with the little bit of oopsies that I made, I really like how this fits. I like how it feels on here, and I'm really excited to go shoot with it. And I do like, again, that it's easy to, it is easy to transfer. The last thing I'll say is there have been plenty of times, and this is just, you know, not paying attention, but uh, I go through quite a few barrels in a year. I'm, I'm swapping barrels back and forth, and I cannot tell you how many times I put a new barrel on in the shop, forget to put Velcro on it. I get out to the range for the first shooting with it, and uh, maybe I'm doing a powder test. I'm blowing off. I'm shooting a you know a Tuesday night match, whatever it is, and I forget to put the Velcro, and now I have no protection from Mirage. This ensures that I never have to worry about that. I can throw any barrel on. I don't have to worry about anything, and then I can just come on in here and be good with it. Uh, the last thing with the length, I'm happy with it. We talked about this, but if I do pull off the, the uh, sunshade here, which I do shoot without the sunshade quite a bit, then uh, you can see I still have plenty of protection so that I'm not getting any barrel heat there. I was a little bit worried that I would not be able to get this on with the sunshade because it is going so far under, but it's actually, it's actually very simple to get on and off underneath it. So that is a big relief. Anyway, this is the F-Class Products Hover Shield. If it's something that you think you would want in order to upgrade your competition setup, head over to their website, fclassproducts.com, and pick one up for yourself. As always, get out and shoot. Have a good one. We'll talk later.